Hello friends, here in this video we will see the design procedure of bell crank lever. Here I have the diagram. Bell crank lever looks something like this. It is an angular shaped machine element. Here the load to be lifted is attached and this end is like a fork end. Next, here effort is applied at the other end of the lever. And here we have the fulcrum pin about which this lever will rotate like it will rotate about this fulcrum pin. So I will give the motion this fulcrum bell crank lever can move in angular direction and because of this when we are applying effort into the horizontal direction weight gets lifted in the vertical direction. So this is one of the most important part of bell crank lever. Now when we are designing this the most important part from where we have to start the design of the bell crank lever is this fulcrum pin because this is the portion about which the entire bell crank lever would be rotating. So the first consideration is designing of fulcrum pin. So let us get started with the design of bell crank lever. Here I have step number one in which we will design design of fulcrum pin. Now when we are designing this fulcrum pin, just I will draw the diagram to explain it. This fulcrum pin will be there inside a bush. Like I can give the example here. Now, this is the fulcrum pin. And now here this fulcrum pin is inserted into a bush which is mostly made up of rubber and then this complete assembly it is inserted into the hole at the fulcrum because how this lever is assembled first we would be having a complete lever with holes provided for effort pin, fulcrum pin and load pin. So here there will be a hole, inside that we would be inserting a bush, this outer circle it shows the bush and in inner circle that is the fulcrum pin. So here as we can see since the fulcrum pin is there inside the bush, now the area of contact, I can say that the length of bush is approximately taken as equal to the length of fulcrum pin. So it is in contact with the fulcrum. Now when the lever moves there is constant rubbing between the fulcrum pin and the rubber bush and there are chances of this pin to get worn out. So now the area which gets worn out that I can draw that would it would be looking like this that once it is continuously rubbed the area will look like this. This is called as the projected area. So now this projected area is nothing but the area of failure or resisting area and that will be equal to the diameter of fulcrum pin into the length of fulcrum pin. This is the area which will get crushed or here the failure since it is rotating the pin fulcrum pin it rotates so it would be called as bearing failure since it is supported in the bush that bush acts as a bearing so this is the area here I can mention that df is the diameter of fulcrum pin, LF is the length of fulcrum pin and I can say that 
let lf length of fulcrum pin be equal to it can range from 1.25 to 1.5 here i'll say let it be 1.25 times of diameter of fulcrum pin this relation i will use so now i'll say that considering failure of fulcrum pin under bearing so therefore bearing area or we can say the resisting area that will be equal to df into lf because only the outer periphery will get worn out so here it is df into lf next i'll say that therefore bearing strength of fulcrum pin strength means load carrying capacity since we are considering bearing so it would be bearing pressure p suffix b into the resisting area so therefore p will be equal to area is df into now instead of lf i will write down it is 1.25 times of df multiplied by bearing pressure so this gives us equation 1 and i can say that from equation number 1 df that is the diameter of fulcrum pin can be calculated and once we know df we can put its value here to get the value of length of fulcrum pin so in this way we can design the fulcrum pin next here one thing to note that is when we are designing the fulcrum pin here the load we should take it is nothing but the load which is coming on to the fulcrum pin and that is the reaction at the fulcrum so here instead of p i will make it as rf that is the reaction at the fulcrum after this in step number 2 we will be designing design of load pin and for that also we would be considering the bearing so writing it as considering bearing failure of load pin again the bearing area which we will get it will be the diameter of fulcrum pin multiplied by the length of here it is load pin so diameter of load pin multiplied by the length of load pin so this is the bearing area as i have explained in case of fulcrum same thing will happen at the load pin also so here i'll give this as dw which is the diameter of load pin here i have lw which is the length of load pin and since length of load pin i'll take the relation it is 1.25 times of w so when we are considering bearing failure of load pin so therefore bearing strength of load pin it will be since i want to find out strength and we are designing the load pin so at the load pin the load is w so strength is w is equal to bearing so it is p suffix b that is bearing pressure into bearing area so bearing strength it is load is equal to bearing pressure into area so therefore w is equal to area is dw into lw that is diameter into length for load pin into bearing pressure 
सो देर फॉर डब्ल्यू विल बी इक्वल टू डी डब्ल्यू इन टू इंस्टेड ऑफ एल डब्ल्यू एल विल राइट इट एज वन पॉइंट टू फाइव टाइम्स ऑफ डी डब्ल्यू इन टू बेरिंग प्रेशर सो नाउ दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू फॉर अस therefore from equation number 2 dw that is the diameter of load pin can be calculated and once we know dw we can put its value multiplied by 1.25 and get its length as well so in step 1 step 2 we have designed designed fulcrum pin and load pin now only effort pin is left effort pin will also be designed considering the bearing consideration so step number 3 design of effort pin again i will consider bearing failure and draw the area which is the resisting area here now this is the resisting area which we have here d suffix p is the diameter of low effort pin l suffix p is the length of effort pin i'll say that since let the relation be length of effort pin is 1.25 times its diameter so now considering bearing failure of effort pin since i can say that i'll write down resisting area capital a it is equal to dp into lp so therefore bearing strength of effort pin that bearing strength strength is the load and at the effort pin effort is applied so p is the load here and since we are considering bearing so therefore this is equal to bearing pressure multiplied by resisting area therefore p is equal to area is dp into lp instead of lp i will write down 1.25 times of d suffix p into the bearing pressure so this gives us equation number 3 and i can say that therefore from equation number 3 d suffix p can be calculated and once we know the diameter of effort pin we can multiply it by 1.25 to get the length of effort pin so in these steps we complete the design of pin now after that if we want to design the cross section the cross section i'll design it near the fulcrum pin this cross section will be mostly we are using rectangle section having width as b depth as d so here we have rectangle section so now i'll say that the last step that is step number 4 is called as design of lever cross section so this is considering bending failure considering bending failure since we know that when the load will be acting this lever it can happen that it will bend so we will design the section for bending so here i have i'll take this length between the fulcrum pin and the load this length i'll say that it is l1 so therefore i'll say that considering bending failure the resisting area will be 
since we have rectangle cross section. So, here we have B and D that is the width and depth of rectangle cross section of the lever. I will say that let B is equal to 2 times of D the relation. So, considering bending failure therefore, bending stress is given by bending stress we know the formula is m by z. So, this becomes equation number we can say 5 for us. Now, after this this is equation 4 now not 5 equation 4. Now, once we know the bending stress value I will say that here where m is equal to bending moment and its value is it is w into we will see that it is l1 but we will take the moment somewhere close to this region. So, this distance that is close to the fulcrum pin this I will call it as x. So, now bending moment is w multiplied by x z is called as section modulus and for rectangle section it is I can get this z is equal to i upon y i is bd cube by 12 divided by y is d by 2. So, from this I will get z as bd square by 6. So, once we know z in this we can replace b by twice of d. So, throughout we will have d, we will put z value and m value in equation number 4 bending stress if it is known. Then we can get the value of d first and once we know the depth of the rectangular section we can even calculate the width by multiplying it by the relation given. So, in this video we have seen the complete design procedure for bell crank lever starting with fulcrum pin, then load pin, effort pin and finally the cross section of the lever. So, I hope everything is clear.